Good morning and welcome to Journey to the Word with J.P. Olson. Good morning, Georgian. Good to see you. You're the one that guides my heart. Good morning, Wilmas. Lord, I need you. It's a blessing to see each of you on today. Hi, Juliana from New York. Georgian from Middle Tennessee. And Wilmas from Wisconsin. And Celine Georgia from... Uh, Celine Georgia. Celine Johnson from Perry, Georgia. Christy... Williams Butcher this morning, the Butcher family, Lisa from Wisconsin. Yes, it's a good morning. It's a great morning. It's great to see each of you here. When sin runs deep, your grace is more. Hi, Colleen from New Mexico. Wendy from South Africa. Grace is it's good to see you. Hi, Juliana. Hi, Brian this morning. Brian and Chrissy, Isabel and Nathan. Yes, holiness is Christ in me. So it's a blessing to see each of you this morning. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. Hi, Nancy from Memphis. My one defense. Gertrude says hi. Hi, Gertrude. I was hoping you all were together. <laughs> from South Africa, yes. Hi, Adele from Massachusetts. Good to see you this morning. Yes. You know, I just continue to play uh, the same songs because... Good morning, Geraldine. Because um, I don't want us to ever forget that we need him. We need him at every second, every minute, every hour. And I'm so happy that we know that and we can continue to say that lord i need you lord i need you oh how i need you every hour i need you my one defense my righteousness we want you to know as Geraldine is putting up all of the uh, information, any, we have new, if you're anyone new for the first time here. Hi Claudia from North Carolina, good to see you on. You're my one defense, my righteousness, and oh God, how I need you. Yes Lord, you're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh Lord, how I need you. Okay, okay. It's one of your favorite songs from the CD? Well, I love it because it's one of my favorite as well. So I want to bless each of you that's here. Bless you this morning with love and happiness. Uh, we put the journey, just put all the announcements up. And, and I do this. I know you hear it every week, but I do it because we never know who's on that's new for the first time. And we want them to stay connected. We want them to always be connected uh, and let, give them ways to be connected, which is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube uh, sign up on our YouTube page, and and uh, and then we want you to know that we love to pray. You know that that I love to pray. The intercessors love to pray, and stand in the gap. And this morning, I'm going to pray some prayers of release. I hope that you are ready this morning, cause to this morning, I told you as I come into the beginning of the year that God gave me two words, and one of those words was release. And so, I, and we're going to release. Things are going to be released today. If you believe it, you can receive it. If you believe it, you can receive it. And so those prayers, I'm going to pray today. So if you have somebody that you need to send a message to right quick and say, get on. Because today is a day of release and we're going to believe it and we're going to step out on it. So that's what's going on today. And so then those of you who uh, would like to get our inspiration readings, that's every Monday it goes out. We have a large database. It encourages you. You just say amen to that. That's right. It gives you words of encouragement to get through the week. And then we're back here on Wednesday for words of encouragement. So you go and sign up on our website and just go visit our website to see what the ministry is doing. 
And then you hear the music, which is my CD, and those who are still, you know, ordering the CD. And then we have our uh, blog. You get our blog, and then our Tuesday night Bible study. It's so just, it's such a blessing. If you want to let us know, and we'll send you the recording. And so I think I've covered majority of everything. If I forgot something, Geraldine will let me know. But we're just blessed to see each of you here. I'm a, like I say, for me, I'm always blessed when I see you all and come and see the family at the table. So I want you to know, know that today you have been summoned. So if you if, if thought you heard somebody knocking or whatever, you've been summoned this morning. So come on over here and have a seat at the table with everyone else. So I want to welcome you, family. Uh, come to the table to partake of the word of God, your spiritual feeding, your spiritual meal. It is being served this morning. The table is spread, and you know what I'm going to say, and there's a feast going on over here. And I'm thankful with gratitude that each of you have joined me today. Yes, and then our giving. Don't let me forget the giving, I, because I must have mentioned the giving early so you can pray on that while I'm giving the message today that God will touch your heart. Those, yes, I'm trying to look fresh and young today, Lisa. Those of you who have stepped up, I'm telling you. I said last week, and I, I danced like David, because I, I made a request, and many of you stepped out and sent that in, sent that in so we could get on the radio. And I'm telling you, we want to have, we, we're praying. I had said, I'm, I needed six more people. Somebody said, no, don't, don't put a limit on it. Let them keep giving, because they'll just give that, and that's it. And so we want to we got, we want we want to be on. We want to have three months paid up so we can stay on, so we can build a following. So those of you who haven't given and would like to give and trust in God, please just send. Just go to our website, hit that button, send a check, whatever you make, to help us so that we can stay on and we can go on the air. We can spread the, the good news, the gospel around the world. We can reach many people. So giving is so important and crucial for our ministry because we rely and we depend on you and the people that God just give us through this, through this, um, through Facebook Live and other areas and modes of of, of uh, media that we can do to reach each person. So the information is on here, and we just want you to pray about it while we are talking about it. Okay, pray about it while I'm speaking today. So I just say, Lord, today, Father, please bless the the people that are reading and that are listening to me today, at least. May their families' health and finances be blessed. I am praying, Lord, every day for the transference of wealth because God said it was set up for us. It was set up for us. So it's no problem to say, well, she praying for the transference. Well, it's, it's right because God said it belongs to us. We're going to get it. So that's what I've been praying for. So, Lord, I ask you just to bless uh, my family here, Lord, and their families and health and finance and to be blessed, Lord. I pray that the windows of heaven open over their life, Lord, and pour out a blessing that shifts them into an overflow. Please grant the desire of their heart, Lord, and keep them safe. May the blessing of the Lord touch your health and your home and your family and your finances, and may he grant that desire of your heart. I see important things coming together by the end of this month. I, I do. I pray, Lord God, I give you thanks, for you are good and your mercy is endless. It's the goodness of God in Jesus' name. We want you, and as I've gone through all of the announcements, and I pray that I did not forget anything, if I did, Geraldine, to put it up. But let's just look at Micah, Micah 7 and 8. It says, my enemies don't be glad because of my troubles. I may have fallen, but I will get up. I may be sitting in the dark. But the Lord is my light. That's in the CEV Bible. How be lifting that the enemy that tried to shame you will help to cover his face in shame instead? How be fitting that the enemy that tried to get dirt on you will be trampled like mud in the streets rather? Okay. So the devil, he's so busy. Y'all know he came into 2023 20, like a rolling crazy fool. Just acting crazy all over the place. We can't even, I mean, it's just murders and this and this is every time you just open something. It's, it's all day long, every day, everywhere. Earthquakes and train derailments and all everything. People just going and shooting up folks. It's all over the world. And one mass shooting yesterday in, in Germany. The father killed, the killed, just shot up people. Going into, a, I think it was a Jehovah Witness meeting and just about 50 people in there. People just, they're just going crazy. It's the monster. It's that monster inside of people. Some people will say, well, I didn't kill that person, but the monster inside of you did. And so we have to just pray and continue to pray. And I just say, Lord, 
The devil, he's been trying to use dirt to bury you in his shame or to use your dirt or whatever it was. Well, that's over and done with as of today. Why? Because you need to get up, and I know you did because you're on here today, and remove whatever junk might bring you down again. And then you need to declare, hi, Linda from Georgia. You need to declare, Lord, I am going to make the devil so sorry that he ever messed with me. Sometimes you need to say that you need to say, devil, let me tell you something, Satan. You're going to be so sorry that you messed with me. You have to boldly speak that. And today I want you to say that. You just need to get up. And you need to remove whatever junk might bring you down again and declare, Lord, I'm going to make the devil sorry he ever messed with me. I'm going to push back the darkness and I'm going to take prisoners away from him. Now, that's now, that's powerful. When you say, I'm going to take some prisoners away from prisoners that you have taken from us, God's children, I'm going to, you're going to be sorry you messed with me. Because when I get through praying and declaring and anointing, mm -mm, you're going to be so sorry. You came up in my house. You're going to be so sorry you came up in my marriage. You're going to be so sorry you came up in my finances. You're going to be so sorry you came up in my health. You're just going to be sorry you tried to mess with me, period. That's right, Wendy, because we're going to do what? We're going to take some authority. Yes, Brian, yes. So you're going to say today, Lord, I'm going to push back the darkness, and I'm going to take prisoners away from him. He's going to be the one who ends up covered with shame. Because I'm going in and I'm taking those that belong God's children back. Can you do it? You ask yourself, sure you can. Anybody or anyone, family, friends, acquaintances, and enemies who are experiencing challenges today, strongholds and infirmities or problems from the past, I'm, I'm offering praises. I'm offering those prayers of release today, this morning. You need to call and invite them, email them, text them. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a little uh, a story. I was you know I was like to do a little story. I'm gonna share this little story briefly. Um, uh, the truth is, I, <clears throat> well, I know I'm not a big fan of, of the Olympics, but I do like to watch you know the water ballet and stuff like that. But now and then I catch them and always manage to learn something from them, either natural or spiritual. And this was many years ago. But one of my favorite, uh, absolute favorite lessons was the final eve of even of the men's gymnastic competition. In the 20, uh, 2004 Athens uh, Olympics, the American Paul Ham's hope for the gold medal seemed to come crashing down. He made a crooked landing, and he toppled into the judges' table. That gave him a disappointing 9.137 score that virtually doomed his chances for a first-place finish. After some moments of what he described as depression, he decided to fight back with what would have to be the best two performances of his life to win the bronze. And let me share this with you. Paul took a deep breath and he began to move powerfully through the air with a routine filled with technical challenges. It was nearly perfect performance with a solid landing at the end. His score was 9.8.37. At first, he didn't know what that meant in terms of a medal. Then he heard his coach screaming, Olympic champion, the gold medal is his. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Some people think you're going down and that's it. And you come back and you take the gold. You take, he took the, he went down crashing into the table of the judges and he thought it was all over with the press and he said, no, I'm not going to give up. And that's what you have to say when the devil come at you and people look at you and say that they done lost everything. Hi, Tina from Texas. They've lost everything and, and, and this, and they're not going to bounce back. And you said, I'm coming back for the gold. I'm not going to settle. And he came back, he made a perfect landing and his, his coach just screaming, Olympic champion, the gold medal was his. And that's how we got to think this morning. I'm going in full force. Paul Ham messed up, but he didn't give up. He, <clears throat> he failed, but he didn't stay down, and neither should you. You may have fallen. You know, like that commercial says, I've fallen and I can't get up. We're going to say, I've fallen, but I'm on my way back up. That's what you're going to say. Okay? That's what you're going to say. Maybe that's a picture of you, or it's going to be a picture of you because you messed up. You made some mistakes. You've experienced making some bad choices and worse decisions. Well, who haven't? If anybody's on here perfect, please write your name in there and let me know because something is wrong. i got to pray for you. If you think that you're perfect, okay? If we've all made some, maybe some bad choices or decisions. We tell people have failed. You failed. You've fallen. And the truth is that failure, failure can be final, but only if you let it be, okay? In other words, you can get up and make a defiant comeback at any moment in which you choose to. This is precisely what the devil is counting on you not doing. He don't want you to read no more. 
He don't want you to read the word no more. He don't want you to give a testimony anymore. This is precisely what the devil is counting on you not to do. He got you down. And he's hoping you'll be so discouraged, so defeated, you'll give up and stay down. But this is your day to say, not a chance, Satan. In my weakness and his strength, I will make a comeback. Now, you know, I don't, lately I've been, you know, speaking to my, my children and, and, and I don't want to keep speaking on them, but I just have to when these testimonies come through. And I mentioned some time back, ago back, my youngest wanted to go into business and trucking business and buy some fleets of trucks or what he wanted to, you know, that's what he wanted to do. He was in the music industry for years and when COVID hit, some things need to change. And, and I tell you, for the past month, uh, my husband, we've been going through it with him uh, because... He's just been hitting challenges after challenges and couldn't get anything to go through. Couldn't get the loans approved. Just a lot of things that was going on. And just and I said to him, uh, because he has little patience, and so does my husband, I said, look, stop going all over the place. You just Everything's just chaos. Settle down and be still. God has a plan. And he kept looking at his situation. And I mentioned before, had somebody had, he was expecting this, somebody giving some money, he had a little extra for this, somebody owed him and whatever he, he needed, he had let somebody borrow some money because their mortgage was due. And so he didn't have the money there that he really needed because he had invested so much. And he just, just, I could hear the, you know, just the downness in his voice. And I don't know, mom, is this was the thing I was supposed to do? I don't know. I just can't even see. And I got to keep it going because I got things I have to do, you know, my mortgage and everything else. And I said, I know God got a plan. And then he would call me back and say, Mama, check this out. Look at this. And I said to myself, I said, why does he keep doing this? God has a plan. I know he does. God wouldn't put that on his mind to bring him that forth. And so yesterday he called me and he said, Mom, he said, because I'm, I'm always saying this and I share this with you all. We are always looking in the other direction where our blessing is going to come. We are always looking for somebody somewhere. We look counting on that. And God always send that blessing. From another place you don't even know. And he called me and he said, Mom, go to, this, go to my email and look and, and see. You. And he said, I, I want to believe it. I just don't know. Well, he was leasing a, a, a truck from the company and uh, that he was contracted through. And one of his drivers had an accident. And, and, and the company sent a, no, an email to him and said, well, we finished the truck that goes back to the company. So we're sending you a check. And we sent the company check because you were the insured and you were leasing the truck. He had forgotten all about that. And here come, they said, we got to divide this check uh, somewhere between 33000 or whatever. I said, look at God. Now, just look at him. I said, you're panicking. You're driving all of us crazy because you're panicking. You got us where you want. I got to have it now. It got to be now. And you didn't even know this blessing was coming from this direction. He didn't even know. He had leased it. The truck was paying the truck. They said, well, you, he was the insured. And he was leasing the truck. And so he gets a part of that check. So I told him, I said, look at God. I said, now you ain't got to worry about going and borrowing nothing from anybody. You ain't got to get nobody to sign anything. You go and get it and God is going to bless you more. Because I had said, sow into the ministry. Whatever you get, you sow it into the ministry. I don't want to hear about mom. I only have this given. And he was giving. And I said, now watch God. We just going to wait on God. I'm sharing that because I can share that. With, through, with my own family, the struggles that we go through and the things that we have to do. And so I, I like, I want to put things in there because I want you to know that God, he, he never fails. He's going to come through. The devil, the devil kept telling my son, hi, Carolyn. The devil kept telling my son it wasn't going to work. He kept saying, well, mama, maybe I just need to stop. It's not, it's just not looking like, I said, I, I, you, I said the word you said, looking, stop looking and trusting. So I trust in God. And so I'm just saying that because we have to trust God. We have to continue whatever we see. We have to trust him. We can't look at what we see. We have to stand on his word. And so that, those are the things that happened. wasn't even looking in that direction. God said, I, and I, every, everything he tried to do, God shut the door. God kept shutting the door. And, I, and he pushed. I said, you know, I had to ask God for forgiveness, Julia, because you pushed me over there trying to go along with what you, you see. But God said, I got, a, I got a plan for you. Sit down and be still. Sit down and be still. And just wait. And he a blessing come, a big blessing come that he didn't even know about from a direction he wasn't even looking. So I'm just telling you, God will do it. He will do it. Just be still. He will do it. So I just, you know, God, just, the devil wants you to give up. And I'm, I use that testimony because the devil wants you to give up. He got you down. And he's hoping you'll be so discouraged, so defeated that you'll give up and stay down. But this is your day to say, not a chance, Satan. In my weakness and in my strength, 
I will make a comeback. And it'll be a big comeback. And that kind of comeback defiance is powerfully expressed in Micah 7, 8, where it says, Do not gloat over me, my enemies. For, the, for, for though I fall, I will rise again. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. That's in the NLT. Good morning, Cheryl from Madison. Good morning. Let's look at this in a few translations. The enemy don't laugh at me. I have fallen down. But I will get up again. I sit in the shadow of, of trouble now, but the Lord will be a light for me. Here's, that's in the NCV Bible. Here one in the, S, the MSG Bible. The Messenger Bible says, don't enemy crow over me. Because I'm down. I'm not out though. I'm sitting in the dark right now. But God is my light. That's in the messenger. So you can say I have fallen. But enemy don't laugh at me. Friends don't laugh at me. Because I will get up again. I sit in darkness now. But the Lord will be a light for me. You see sometimes you must learn how to speak up for yourself. And talk to the devil simultaneously. Okay. This is what you say when it ain't over. It ain't over till it's over. Okay, it ain't over. The truth is I have fallen. However, that's nothing more than a mere fact. And for some of us, if we're going to be completely honest, our fall was not accidental. The sin in our lives is not new. We are repeat offenders against God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness. We puffed again. We drank again. We had an affair again. We lied again. We gossiped again. We stole again. We cussed somebody out again. The bottom line, we did it again. Deliberately. And when you learn how to acknowledge and admit your sin for what it is, you'll be traveling down the right road to recovery. One of the worst things you can do is to act like you don't sin. None of us is sinless. Not even in our best day. Dressed in our best attire. Hanging around the most uh, best people on our best behavior. Still sin is ever present in us. So if you want to do something to help yourself get up, be honest that no one knocked you down in the first place. Sometimes nobody knock us down. We get, get ourselves down. Many of us deliberately lay down. So step one is be real with you. Step two is be real with others. After all, we have all, all our sin. And some of that sin is the identical twin to yours. In a nutshell, we're in no position to judge. So stop, judge, stop judging people. Stop judging folks. Be real with the enemy. See, you have to remember who Satan is. In Revelations 12, 10, then I heard a voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom, the dominion, the dominion reign of your God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our believing brothers and sisters have been thrown down at last. He who accuses them and keeps bringing charges of sinful behavior against them before our God day and night. That's in the Amplified Bible. That's Satan and his job description. All roll up into one. He's an accuser that does nothing but, confu but con accuse people. And the scripture even goes so far as to say he does this day and night. Isn't that just like an enemy? To lousy mouth you day in and day out as though it were a full-time job that they received a paycheck, a bonus, an increase, and from. It's some people gossiping and lying and doing stuff like they're getting a check for it. Like they're getting a reward for it. God said he's an accuser. Now, the word accuser is defined as to blame someone for something wrong or illegal, to say that someone is guilty of a fault or crime, to condemn, to criticize, to damn, to denounce, to prosecute, to uh, implicate, to impeach, to defame, to uh, indict. It's middle name from Anglo-French accuser from Latin accuser, which means to call to account. It is the combination of ad and casa, which together means lawsuit. And that's what the enemy attempts to do. To us daily, accuse us of wrongdoing day and night. He wants to prosecute us, condemn us, and bring us up on lawsuit charges of guilt. But I love the word of God in Romans 8 and 1. It says, therefore there is now no what? Condemnation. No guilty verdict, no punishment. For those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. That's in the Amplified Bible. That's one of those scriptures the enemy help, hopes you will never read. Never learn. Never memorize and certainly never apply. Why? Because when you admit you're wrong before God, the enemy can accuse night and day and steal for the believer. There's no condemnation. And that word condemnation is defined as to express complete disapproval of, and to sentence to a punishment, especially death, to endure something unpleasant, to declare to be unfit for use officially, to prove the guilt of. Its Latin origin is condemnare, from damnare. 
literally means to inflict loss. The penalty we should receive, we don't. And even though the enemy accuses us before God day and night and desires that condemnation would sentence us to a punishment, especially death, it's not going to happen. Do you know why? Because the Bible says the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have what? Life. Enjoy it and have it abundantly to the full till it overflows in John 10.10. 10. So I reiterate, therefore there is... Now, no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior, which is why we should never be ashamed to admit our mistakes, bad choices, and even willful sin. Because as guilty as we are, we still have an advocate. Hallelujah. We still have an advocate. That's right. They, they praise the Lord. The adversary may be doing what he's doing. But we have an advocate. In 1 John 2 and 1, my little children, believers, dear ones, I am writing you these things so that you will not sin and violate God's laws. And if anyone sins, sins we have an advocate who will intercede for us with the Father, Jesus Christ, who's the righteous, the upright, the just one, who conforms to the Father's will in every way, purpose, thought, and action. That's an amplified Bible. We have an advocate, and Jesus is our intercessor to the Father. For this very reason, we can always come clean with the mess we made in our fall. So do not be ashamed to acknowledge, admit, and confess to yourself, to others, and I, and even to the enemy. Yep, I have fallen, but I can and I will get up. I've had to say to God, part of this decision, part of this reason I'm in this mess, Lord, because I decided to do it this way. Rushing something. I said it recently. Lord, please forgive me. I repent, Lord, because I moved ahead of you trying to do it this way. Because that, that, and I made the mess and had things delayed. And we have to tell him that. Don't allow yourself, others, or even Satan, to make you think you have to stay down because you went down. No. For this very reason, we can always come clean with the mess we made in our fall. So do not be ashamed to acknowledge, admit, and confess to yourself, to others, and even to the enemy. Yeah, I have fallen, but I can and I will get up. And I don't have to call the med medical people to come and get me up. Because God is going to help me get up. You know, Satan, he, no, you make a deal. Satan, he, don't, don't allow yourself. Or even Satan to make you think you have to stay down because you went down. No, you made a deliberate decision that I will not stay here. I admit I messed up. And when I do, that will be the strength my legs need to get me back up on my feet. Family, never worry about the accusers when you have an advocate. Write that down, okay? Never worry about the accusers when you have an advocate. And the word advocate is defined as a person who public, publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or policy. A person who pleads a case on someone else's behalf to recommend or support publicly. Its Latin origin is advocare, literally means to call one's aid. A few synonyms are apostle, back, backer, booster, champion, friend, gospeler, herald, high priest, promoter, true believer, white knight, applauder, cheerleader. That's what our advocate is here for us. I have cheer, cheerleaders on here. They've encouraged me to go on. What you said, Brian? Tell that the devil where to go and how fast to get there. You know, Y'all know what to say this morning. Is, is it a wild windy? Y'all know what to say this morning. That's right, but not Jesus. Hallelujah. He's our public advocate. He advocates for us in public. That's what our advocate is for. That's what he's for us, here for us. He publicly supports us and pleads for us and comes to our aid. And the truth is, some people will say they help you quietly under their breath. In the corner of a room where no one can see or hear them. But not Jesus. He's our public advocate. He doesn't care who sees or hears. His support and defense of us. No matter what the charges may be. Now are you understanding why the enemy hates us so much? We're guilty. He accuses us. Yet Jesus steps in and Satan I publicly denounce their condemnation. Which is further reason for you to remind yourself today. Enemy, yes I've fallen. But I can and I will get back up. And I'm coming after you. You see getting up again, coming back again. That's a choice. And once you need, one you need to make this very day. Serve notice that the devil's victory is temporary. You're not staying down. And you know how I know because I'll tell you. Micah says in verse 8, My enemies, don't be glad because of my troubles. I may have fallen, 
but I will get up. I may be sitting in the dark, but the Lord is my light. But keep reading because he doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop there. He goes on uh, until he goes on in verse nine and say, I have sinned against the Lord. And so must I endure his anger until he comes to my defense. But I know that I will see him making things right for me and leading me to the light. In other words, yes, I got it wrong, but thank God he can make things right. And yes, indeed, he will do that even for the likes of someone like you and me. Listen to the translation. It said, I have sinned against the Lord, so I will endure his fury until he takes up my cause and wins my case. He will bring me into the light and I will see his victory. That's in the GWT. You can say, we have sinned against the Lord as now we must endure his anger for a while. But in the end, he will defend us and right wrongs that have been done for us. He will bring us out to the light and we will live to see him save us. However, my favorite reads like this. Don't enemy crow over me. I'm down, but I'm not out. I'm sitting in the dark right now, but God is my light. I can take God's punishing rage. I deserve it. I sin, but it's not forever. He's on my side and he's going to get me out of this mess. He's turned on the lights and show me his ways. I'll see the whole picture and, have, and, and how right he is. And my enemy will say it too. And he discredited, yes, disgrace. This enemy kept taunting. So where is this God of yours? I'm going to see if it, I'm going to see it with these, my own eyes. My enemy disgrace, trash in the gutter. Satan, you're going down, and you're going down for good. You see, my friends, we're all sin. We've all missed a mark, falling short of his glory. We messed up, we've lost, and even laid down. And yet God loves us so much that he will not leave us there, no matter how the enemy accuses and taunts in the end. Our father raised his children again. And worse yet, the enemy will have to watch him do it just for us. The enemy is so mad at us, he can't stand it because he can't be forgiven, but we can then my enemies will see this and they will be covered with shame because they ask me, where is the Lord your God? Now I look at them. They are tramped like mud in the streets. That's in verse 10. They see, they say, where is your God? Y'all sit up there praying, God, he took your child away. He's giving you cancer. Where is your God? And you say, hey, you're going to see it and you're going to be looking in shame. It said that my enemies will see this and they will be covered with shame. Because they asked me, where is the Lord your God now? How befitting that the enemy that tried to shame you would have to cover his face in shame instead. How befitting that that enemy that tried to get dirt on you would be trampled like mud in the streets rather. The devil's been trying to use dirt to bury you in his shame. Well, that's over and done with because as I came in early, I said, today you need to get up. Remove whatever junk might bring you down again and declare, Lord, I'm going to make the devil sorry he ever messed with me. I'm going to push back the darkness, and I'm going to take prisoners away from him. He's going to be the one who ends up covered with shame. Can you do this? You say, sure you can. You are the walking, talking proof of the grace, the love, and the restoring power of Jesus Christ, who can turn your fall into a powerful testimony for new followers of Christ. That voice that's telling you is over. What's the use? God doesn't love you after you've done what you've done. The, that's the voice of hell and those are lies. The truth is that according to the Bible, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. In Romans 5.20, the Amplified Bible says it like this. But the law came to increase and expand the awareness of the trespass by defining and unmasking sin. But where sin increased God's remarkable, gracious gift of grace, his unmerited favor has surpassed it and increased all the more. And because of God's amazing grace, you fall down. Your fall does not have to be final or fatal. You went down, but you're not staying down. You're going to come back more of a winner and more of a warrior than ever before. Just look at Paul Ham. Can you imagine how embarrassing it must have been to not only mess up and fall into the limpers of all places, but to fall so bad that you fall right into the judge's table. And yet he went from the ground to the goal and so can you. Come on now, so can you. For just, for just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. That's in uh, the King James Version. Here are three translations. But a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. That's in the Amplified Bible. The righteous may fall seven times, but still get up. 
in the CEB Bible. Good people might fall again and again, but then always get up. That's in the ERB Bible. You, my family, and my friend, you may have fallen even seven times. And I still reassure you, today, you're fallen, but you can and will get up. And you're going to get up. So get up. Falling is an accident. Staying down is a choice. Life has knocked me down a few times. It has shown me things I never wanted to see. I've experienced sadness and failures. But one thing is for sure. I always get up. I have the tenacity to get up and keep running. Struggles are required to survive in life because to stand up and you got to know what falling is like. Struggles are required to survive in life because to stand up, you got to know what falling is like. You say, I've fallen, i cried, been angry and afraid, but even when I was hurting, I always found a way to keep going. A strong person never gives up. A person in Christ never give up. What defines us is how well we rise after falling. Hallelujah. Falling is a part of life. Getting back up is living. I want you to take some nuggets here. Sometimes you fall because there's something down there that you are supposed to find. Hallelujah. Failure is not falling but refusing to get back up. The Lord has not changed his mind about you. Hallelujah. Something you thought was over is about to come around again. Hi, Gloria. Good to see you on. Something you thought was out of reach is about to be put into your hand. God's plan for you will stand. God already has a plan for everything you're going through. Your best days really are ahead. Hallelujah. Would you say, I fall, but I get up? Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. God said, the Lord has not changed his mind about you. Something you thought was over is about to come around again. Something you thought was out of reach is about to be put into your hand. God's plan for you will stand. God already has a plan for everything you're going through. Your best days really are ahead. This season is big and the words are big. Some visions can be overwhelming and sometimes you simply feel exhausted. Yet there's a refreshing coming to you now. A strengthening in your body and spirit in Jesus' name. Remember who you are and you were made for this. The amount of opposition you attract is a direct indication of the anointing you carry. Listen to me this morning. Listen to me this morning. Goliath shows up for the Davids, not the Eliabs. Yet every Goliath surely does fall. Yes, uncommon warfare gathers over uncommon destiny, but so does uncommon favor. Don't ever forget it. Heaven, the Father, you are my safe place. We can't find a safe place in the church. We can't find a, find a safe place among our friends. Jesus Christ is our safe place. Okay, you are my peace, Lord. You are my source. You are my help. You are my life. Teach me to walk in your ways, Lord. Lead me in the path of righteousness, joy, and victory. I'm going to say today, victory is mine. Prosper me, Lord, and use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. The enemy loves to tell you it will never be your turn. He loves to tell you that. He magnifies your problems to make you feel stuck and low. Would you say yes when he stand what <clears throat> God's promise to stand? What he says will be yes, nullified, will be fulfilled. Yes, it will. The enemy loves to tell you it will never be your turn. He magnifies your problems to make you feel stuck and low. But he's a pathological liar who has no clue about your destiny. Listen, God wants to heal you today. We say we believe we can be healed. But we really don't trust God to do it for several reasons. Unworthiness, which I will explain. We don't see it happening today on a large scale at all. We say preachers and evangelists and prophets are not healing people. Know that God is still healing. And there are people being healed today. We must be more proactive with our gifts. We must start to speak healing before we see it. I get up every morning and touch my body everywhere and say, I'm healed, Lord. Everywhere, I'm healed. I'm healed. You have to speak it. God wants to heal you. We have to, be, so we can believe that we can be healed. We say we believe we can be healed, but we really don't trust. But God do it for God to do it for several reasons. We don't trust God for unworthiness and other things. But we don't see it happening today on a large scale, and we don't. But we got to start believing these miracles. We got to be more proactive. We must start to speak healing before we see it. If you need healing, God wants to heal you. And when someone prays for you, He can heal you. 
The scripture guarantees God's promise. You shall lay hands on the sick. Did he not say that? And they will recover. You are not doing the healing. Pastors are not doing the healing. God is doing the healing. Hi, Phyllis. I'm not doing the healing. For you, God is doing the healing. It would be best if you spoke about it before seeing it. You speak about being healed from anything that will attack your body. Stop worrying and talking about, oh, Lord, I may have cancer because it's running my family. I may have diabetes because diabetes it's running my family. I may have heart problems because it's running my family. Stop that foolishness. The doctors will tell you that. Fill out the form. You probably, it's probably hereditary. No, I'm not going to claim any of that. It would be best if you spoke about it before seeing anything come to you. If you are a believer, then healing is a gift that you will simply imply in your prayer in your life. I'm healed. You must forgive. In the Lord's prayer, it says you must forgive. You have to say, Lord, I forgive myself because of your blood. Hallelujah. I'm trying to preach it, Christy. You have to say, Lord, I forgive myself because of your blood. You can think you are unworthy to be healed. Unworthiness of the trick of the enemy. Maybe you smoked all your life and you think you're not a candidate to be healed from lung cancer. Possibly your organs are shutting down or you suffer from possibly your organs, uh, something going on. Or you suffer from emphysema and you suffer from diabetes from eating too much sugar or overweight or whatever it may be. You say to yourself, Lord, I'm just not worthy of being healed because I did this to myself. We all have done things to ourselves. Maybe we were not a good husband or a wife or a mother or a father or employer. Maybe you can hold that illness down with you if you do not forgive and remove anything impure for you. Now keep on hating on people and keep on not forgiving somebody. And then you wonder why this, this illness won't leave you. We've all done something wrong. But we've got to forgive ourselves and believe the leper fell to his feet and said, Lord, if you want to, you can heal me. And Jesus said, I want to. Jesus wants to heal you. You can say, Lord, I want you to heal me. And Jesus said, I want to heal you. It's his will to heal you. It's throughout the Bible, I'm the Lord that heals thee. Did he not say that? And we have to learn how to forgive people and forgive stuff and move on. I ask God to heal anyone who is sick or has an infirmity. We are thanking God in advance. You will say, I'm healed. And you will hear the devil's inner voice tell you, no, you're not. But you will continue to say, I'm healed. Even when you feel that little pain, the devil will say, no, you're not. The scripture says he sent his word and they were healed. Please get into the word if you're not. Do not give license to the devil to say, this is my cancer. Okay? I have a heart disease. I have high blood pressure. My family has a history of diabetes, so I'm going to have it too. Do not speak it. Instead, speak your healing and thank God in advance. Hallelujah. Lord, look upon us with your eyes of mercy. May your healing hand rest upon me. May your life-giving powers flow into every cell of my body and into the depths of my soul. Hallelujah. The cleansing and the purifying, restoring me to wholeness and strength. For service in your kingdom. Dear God, you're Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Lord, let your healing power fill this place, Lord, today. Let it feel on the Facebook Live today, Lord. Let it feel, Lord. Wherever the people are, Lord, fill this place. And may all the enemies of my health be scattered in the name of Jesus. Our God is love, and he showers his unconditional love to all. I enter your throne room, Lord, of grace and mercy, not to receive mercy and grace, to keep Jesus, to keep going in Jesus' name. You have to speak it. Yes, Lord, forgive myself because of your blood. Yes, Lord, Linda. We're gonna, I'm going to pray this healing prayer right now. I'm looking at my time. The healing prayer. Dear God, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Let your healing power fill this place right now. Even now, Lord, fill this place right now. Even where we where in all the places we are, Lord, around the nations and the states, let your healing power, Lord, fill this place. Hallelujah. And may all the enemies of my health be scattered. In the name of Jesus, heal me, dear Lord, and I shall be healed. Father, save me from the deadly pestilence that stalks in darkness. Release me from the clutches of the enemy and help me to enjoy good health. Cover me with your wings, Lord, and help me to find healing and a wholeness in your love. It is in Jesus' name that I believe and I pray. You've got to believe he's going to heal you today. I've said it. You've got to believe it. You can't say, well, I'm still feeling some pain. Well, why are you doubting him? That's okay. Don't worry about the plane. But he healed the blind man. He said, what, what do you see? He said, well, I see people look like tall trees. He touched him again and then he started seeing clear. You may not see it right away, but it's coming. You just got to believe. The forgiveness prayer. Lord God, I have done what is evil. And we have these prayers listed on here. You can see them. 
Lord God, I have done what is evil in your sight and given the enemy a foothold in my life. Forgive me, Lord. Rescue and deliver me from the control of the enemy. Purify me with the blood of your son, Jesus, and remove sickness and disease that had entered my body as a result of sin. Close every demonic door that has been opened in my life. Close it. Shut it, Lord. Bestow your glory on me and lift my head up. Lead me in the right path and help me to be faithful to you all the days of my life. Because, God, your guidance never fails. It is in Jesus' name I believe and pray. That's the, that's the prayer, the forgiveness prayer. And I just uh, quoted the, said the uh, healing prayer. Now the healing from anxiety prayer. We got people with anxiety. I told my son, you, 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 you're anxious and that'll bring on anxiety. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving me the peace. He is Jehovah Shalom. Thank you for giving me the peace that surpasses all understanding. I refuse to let my heart be troubled by anxious thoughts. Did you hear what I said? I refuse to let my heart be troubled by anxious thoughts. Settle down. Devil, you have no power over my mind. Hallelujah. I refuse to subject myself to your lies. Today I choose to walk in the truth, which is found in the word of God. I have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Therefore, I am peaceful and whole in the name of Jesus. Father, please remove anything in my heart that will cause me to become fearful and anxious. I stand firm in my healing and I declare that anxiety is not my portion. It is not my portion. And you need to say that. Use this bad experience that the enemy intended for your demise to strengthen your faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. We're going on to the restoration prayer. Father, you promised in your word to restore health to our bodies and to heal our wounds so that we can enjoy abundant peace and joy. Lord, let your resurrection power bring healing and wholeness to every organ and function of my body. Keep me from the pit of destruction. Restore joy to my spirit and restore my mind and body. Thank you for the loves and the hearts. Give me wisdom so that I can take good care of myself. In Jesus' name, I believe and I pray. Hallelujah. You got to stay behind this. I believe and I pray. And you need to say, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Here it comes the authority prayer. Hallelujah. Yes, we're talking about release this morning. Dear Jesus, you have given us the authority to trample over snakes. Can you imagine that? The trample over snakes and scorpions? By that authority, I command sickness to dry by its roots. In the name of Jesus, I have been set free from every kind of illness. Therefore, spirit of infirmity, leave my body right now. Devil, my body is a temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in it. I command you and your demons to take your evil load, your evil hand and load, and leave my body in the name of Jesus. I pray this believing in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. You need to come on with me now. And like I said, the prayer to you, I, I prayed, I listened here, I want you to see them. You need to probably go back and say, I need to get the authority prayer. I need to get the forgiveness prayer. But now we're talking about divine health prayer. Father, I praise and honor you today. There's no one like you in heaven and on earth. Nothing is complicated for you, my king. I come before your presence. Asking you to heal my body. Let your consuming fire burn away every sickness and disease from my family, from my children, from my friends, Lord. Let them become believers. Every error of sickness from the camp of the enemy meant to bring harm in my body come out right now. I'm going to say that again. Every, let your consuming fire burn away from me, Lord. I come before your presence. Asking you to heal my body, Lord. Let your consuming fire burn away every sickness and disease. Every error of sickness from the camp of the devil meant to bring harm to my body. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Speak it out. Evil load of body, weakness, and pain. Come out and never return. Never to return. You don't want it to return in the name of Jesus. Divine health is my portion in Jesus Christ. The healing prayer. The healing power prayer. Heavenly Father, you are my help in times of need. Lord, I am in so much pain that I can hardly do anything. I don't know what is wrong with me and the doctors cannot find any disease in my body. Father, help me. Let your healing power fill my body. Let it flow in my cells, in my organs, and in my soul. Cleanse my body and soul from all demonically inspired diseases and cause me to enjoy divine health for the glory of your name. Hallelujah. Amen. The victory prayer. The victory prayer. I'm coming down to the stronghold prayer. The victory prayer. Holy God, I will sing of your great love towards me. I proclaim your love and faithfulness today. Even in my pain, O oh God, anoint me with strength and fill me with your peace. 
Lord, hold me with the righteous hand as I heal and recover. Be my source of encouragement every time I feel like giving up because of too much pain. Silence the nagging voices of the enemy when he tries to fill my mind with doubt and fear. Remind me of your healing promises that I may continue to fight this fight of faith and walk in victory. It is in Jesus' name I believe and I pray. I shall live prayer. I shall live prayer and not die. Lord, you sent your son, Jesus, to come and pay for my healing. Therefore, this sickness is not my portion. I shall not die because of this sickness. I will live to declare the glorious things that I that the Lord has done. Every organ function of my body aligned with the word of God. Start functioning according to the original blueprint. Sickness, go back to the camp of the enemy where you belong and do not return in Jesus' name. I speak healing over every function of my body and not to return. You got to speak it and believe it. Stronghold prayer. Almighty God, your word says that we do not war against flesh and blood, but against evil forces in heavenly places. Lord, I have been struggling with depressing thoughts for a while. The devil keeps building strongholds in my mind by attacking me with fearful thoughts and doubts. Deliver me from these attacks right now. Break every stronghold of fear and uncertainty in my mind and fill my heart with the perfect love that I may become courageous and strong to stand against the lies of the enemy. May your healing power fill my mind so that I can gain victory over depression in Jesus' name. Healing from the past prayer. The devil wants to remind you of your past all the time. Heavenly Father, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for your faithfulness toward us. Lord, I come humbly before you to ask you to heal my mind and heart from past pains and hurts in my life. Some of us are carrying past pains and hurts. Mend my broken heart and help me to forgive and let go. I lay down all my frustrations, anxiety, and bad memories. Let your love comfort me, Lord. May I find peace and hope in my distress. It is in Jesus' name I believe and receive and I pray. Resurrection pr power prayer. Father, you're my strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Lord, you tell those that are weary and heavy laden to come to you and they will find rest. Father, I am burdened with sickness and disease. The enemy keeps attacking me with one after another. Oh, Lord, let the resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead resurrect every dead cell in my body. May I lift up every pain so that I can start enjoying good health. It is in Jesus' name I believe and pray. Father, I pray for the children, the children that have... Uh, different, these different, um, uh, just want to make sure I don't say the wrong thing here, uh, things that are going on outside in their bodies, and HD, HD, um, LDHD, which have the hyper, the different things that are going on, the different things that the kids are dealing with today. Lord, I pray, I denounce all of that off of the children's lives. I denounce it, Lord. I denounce it. Restore these children, Lord. Restore their minds. Calm them down. Settle them down in peace, Lord. We know, Lord, who you are, but the devil want to keep it all confused. Father, we pray for our children and grandchildren, Lord, that they're made whole, Father. The blood of Jesus prayer. The resurrection power prayer. Father, you are my strength. As I said, in ever-present help in time of need. Lord, will you tell those that are, we're in heaven late to come to you and they will find rest. The enemy keeps attacking me with one disease after the other, Lord. But let the resurrection power to raise Jesus from the dead. Resurrect every dead cell in my body. May it lift off every pain that I can start enjoying good health. It is in Jesus' name, I believe. I'm looking at my time here. The blood of Jesus' prayer. Lord, I bow before your throne and praise you. You are a good father. There is none like you. Thank you for giving up your son for us, Lord. Through his sacrifice, we are made righteous and we are made whole. By the power and the blood of Jesus, I take authority over this sickness. I command it to leave in Jesus' name. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I declare and decree that the kingdom of darkness does not have power over my health. I render the plans of the enemy against my health ineffective and powerless. This is what you have to say. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. And I declare and I decree that the kingdom of darkness does not have power over my health. I render the plans of the enemy against my health ineffective and powerless. you got to say whatever you're trying to do, Satan, is ineffective and powerless in my body. In Jesus' name. No disease shall prosper prayer. No disease shall prosper prayer. King of glory, forgive me for sinning and opening doors of infirmity in my life. Lord, help me to be rooted and grounded in your love. Thank you for disarming spiritual rulers and authority. 
for making a public spectacle of them and triumph triumphing over them and by the cross, Lord. I claim that victory for my health today, Lord. I claim it. I declare that no weapon formed against me in the force of sickness and disease shall prosper. In Jesus' name, I believe and I pray. Mental healing prayer. Oh, Father God of my salvation, I lift my soul and surrender. I surrender, Lord, my mind to you today. The devil has been filling my mind with condemning charges. Lord, help me to remember that you have paid it, paid for all my past mistakes. Don't y'all let the devil try to remind you of your past mistakes. The devil, they, he's been trying to fill your mind with condemning charges. Lord, help me to remember that you have paid it all for my mistakes. And therefore, I'm no longer under condemnation. I refuse to conform to things of this world and choose to renew my mind with your word. Lord, bring healing to my mind as I feed on your word and expose every lie that the enemy has been feeding me. Keep me in perfect peace and remove any negative thoughts of suicide, guilt, shame, and depression from my mind. In Jesus' name, I believe and I pray. Oh God, arise and scatter all enemies and adversaries in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire, every force of darkness fighting against my marital destiny in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire upon every enchantment of darkness against my life in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire upon every activity of witchcraft against my life in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost. Fire upon every satanic opposition against my life in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire upon every limitation against my life in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire is falling down today. We speak and release. I release the Holy Ghost fire upon every spirit of untimely death in Jesus' name. I'm going to say that again. These untimely death, I release the Holy Ghost fire upon every spirit of untimely death in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire upon every stagnation against my life in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire against every ancestral connection in my father's house in Jesus' name. I won't claim it. I release the Holy Ghost fire against every evil covenant working against my life in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire against every evil utterance working against my life in Jesus' name. I release the Holy Ghost fire against every witchcraft, every utterance. I release it. Everything that's fighting against my marriage, Lord, I release it in Jesus' name. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, return to cinder every arrow of the devil that's targeted against my life and my family. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the Holy Ghost, Lord. By the Holy Ghost fire, consume poverty in my life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. By the Holy Ghost, I consume failure in my life, in Jesus' name. By the Holy Ghost fire, I, concern, I consume lack in my life. Lack in my life, in Jesus' name. By the Holy Ghost fire, I consume sickness in my life, in Jesus' name. By the Holy Ghost fire, I consume backwardness in my life, in Jesus' name. By the Holy Ghost fire, I consume generational curses in my life, in Jesus' name. By the Holy Ghost fire, I consume evil patterns in my life in Jesus name by the Holy Ghost fire I consume barrenness in Jesus name by the Holy Ghost fire I consume every evil deposit of the devil in my life in Jesus name thank you father for you indeed are consuming fire hallelujah that's my message for today it's 10 o'clock on the dot and that's my message let me jump right into giving and let me I hope that you pull them that you cling to them Geraldine have them listed release this stuff today I don't want us to be coming back every week we got all these same problems release it you got to believe it, though, and stand on it. Giving, Lord, when we want to talk about giving, Lord, you know what I need, and I don't have to beg for it, but just ask. When we give, we become like Christ and journey to the Word. We thank you for partnering with the ministry to help our outreach. Jesus said, in everything I did, I showed you by this, showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. That's in Acts 20, 25. Yes, God is so good. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. That's in Deuteronomy 8.18. So we're entering this moment now today that I'm asking you to give. And those of you who have stepped up, I got your blessing. It came through and God blessed you and made the doors of heaven open for you in your favor. God gives us the blessing of working, earning, saving, spending, and accumulating wealth. And we do this for our children, we do this for our community, we do this for ourselves, but we also do it to honor God as faithful steward. So today I'm asking you, is give, give to be blessed. And the Lord God said this, test me in this way. Test me in this way. Thank you, Colleen. I'm trying to help this morning. 
Thank you. The Lord said, test me in this way, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. That's what God is telling you to do. Take a step. He said, just test me. Take a step of giving. Giving is not just about sacrifices. God way of ritually introducing us into the flow of sowing and reaping in the subcurrent of his creation. So will you join me today as I give as well in trusting his, this promise by giving to the ministry, worshiping God as faithful stewards through giving. Participate in the harvest that God has laid up for us by sowing your gifts with him today into our ministry. And here's the prayer of salvation. Oh, I'm going over. It's 1002. I don't know who's on here. That may need to hear the word. That may need to renew their vows with God because they have uh, somehow slipped away a little bit. If you are burdened, if you are hurting and want release from your pain today, we want you to know that God is near to those who are brokenhearted. That's in Psalm 34, 18. Through the forgiveness of our sins on the cross, Jesus provided an opportunity to live a more accessible life. If you would like that, you can accept Jesus' gift of salvation and be saved today. God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you in Hebrews 13 and 5. God desires a relationship with you, an intimate relationship with you. If you feel lost right now, you can return to the fold by entering a relationship with God and say, Lord, I've slipped away for a minute, but I want to come back, Lord. Forgive me. All you must do is ask Jesus to forgive you for your sin, for going away and ask him into your life by faith. That's in Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9. And as I wrap up in Romans 10 and 9 in the Bible, Lord, you said that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now I confess as my Lord. I confess Jesus as my Lord. And with my heart I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, from this day forward, help me to live every day for you and in a way that pleases you. At this very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. And according to his word right now, I am saved because God cannot and will not abandon you. And that's my prayer of salvation for you today. And just want to tap back one second on giving. For those of you who made a commitment, please stand on your commitment. You said you're going to give. We need your help today. And we want to get this, this television ministry going. So if you have just held back for whatever reason or if you if sometimes we have problems, we can't do those things. But if you made a commitment, stay faithful to your commitment and sow your seed today. And that's our message for today. Oh, my, it's 10.04. I thank God for each one of you. I thank you for staying on with me as I've gone through this, Lord. I just, I just thank you all so much. I love you so much as my family. And for those who are new on today, uh, we are family. And we want you to know that we believe we are followers of Jesus Christ. And that we believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I just thank each one of you. I'm going to briefly try to see if I can capture everyone because I've gone over. Thank you so much, Geraldine, for what you've done, for hanging in here with me. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you, Wilmas. And thank you, Nancy from Memphis. And Colleen from New Mexico. Uh, Lamar, thank you. I, I'm, I'm not sure I've seen you on before. I know you're one of my friends. So thank you for coming and joining us today. Wendy and, and uh, Gertrude from South Africa, that's on. Yes, I thank you. Um, who am I saying? Adele from Boston, Massachusetts. I'm, Massachusetts, I'm so happy that you are on. Georgia and Springing from Middle Tennessee. Carol Ann from Middle Tennessee. Adele from Boston again. Yes, Sin Runs Deep, Your Grace is More. Tina Stepp from Texas. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Phyllis Dotson from Memphis, Tennessee. Yes, Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness, uh, for bringing these on, for just... Touching people hard to come and join me this morning. Lisa from Wisconsin. Linda from uh, Georgia, Canton, Georgia. Um, Celine from Perry, Georgia. Yes, I said Colleen from New Mexico. Celine from Perry, Georgia. Yes, I'm just trying to make sure I capture everybody that's on. I don't want to miss anyone uh, this morning. I want to call you out and thank you for blessing me. Christy and Brian Butcher, yes, from Wisconsin. Hallelujah. We bless you and thank you, Lord. Yes, we thank you. Hallelujah. Phyllis and Linda and Wendy and Adele and Juliana and just Gloria uh, that's joining us today. So happy to see Gloria on today. Yes. If you come on, I'm going to call your name. <laughs> that's just what I do. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm just Cheryl Thompson from Madison, Wisconsin. Yes. 
I want to make sure I get everyone. Uh, I get everyone on. I don't miss anyone. And if I miss you, we'll get your name on. Oh, I need you, Lord. Every hour, Lord. I need you. Claudia from North Carolina. Yes. So blessed to see Claudia on. My one defense. My righteousness. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, how I need you. Wilma's arm from Wisconsin. Yes. You're my one defense. My righteousness. Oh, Lord, how I need you. Yes, Lord. You're my righteousness. You're my one defense. My righteousness. Oh, God. I pray that you enjoyed the message this morning, that you could pull something from the message and please share with friends uh, that you believe need to hear the message today. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to release all this stuff, all this stuff we're going to release. We, we, we're not, we're not going to go through 2023, but all of this nonsense and all these diseases and all these problems and health, marriage, finances, and children, all this stuff. We're not going through it. We're going to trust God and we're going to believe it when we pray it. So I would look to see you on Wednesday. I'll be on home Wednesday at one o'clock. To see each one of you. I thank you. God love you. And I love you too. And yes, I'm apologizing. Because I think this I've gone a little bit further. I'm usually off at 10.06 if I go over. But it went over just a little bit further today. And I thank you for hanging in here with me. God loves you. I love you too. Be blessed and have a great day. Peace.